So hi, welcome to Anchor Reviews, an episode of After the Credits on Anchor Reviews. This is Tyler from Anchor Reviews, and this is my review on the movie Babylon. This is the move movie written and directed by Damien Chazelle. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his last name. But anyway, this guy has directed a lot of movies that I liked, such as Whiplash and La La Land. They also wrote those movies. However, he also directed a movie called First Man, which wasn't very good. It was a snooze fest of a movie. And I remember when the movie came out, people were saying that, oh, they don't make a big deal about the American flag being planted because they want to show it as like a worldly achievement and not necessarily American achievement, which was a bunch of BS because they did that to painter China. But in the end, the, the movie ended up bombing. So I digress. So Babylon is a new movie out now by him. And it kind of shows a semi-fictionalized sense of the history of Hollywood from the 1920s and the early 1930s, how it transitioned from the silent era to the talkies, but also showing how decadent Hollywood was back in the day. Now the thing is this movie was supposed to start filming back in 2020, but because of the pandemic, production got delayed a whole year, and originally Emma, Emma Stone was supposed to play the Margot Robbie character of Leslie Leroy, sorry, Nellie Leroy, and I can definitely see her character like physically embodying that character. However, I do think Margot Robbie was better for delivering the dialogue she was given, which was pretty crass, which I'll get into later. So the movie also stars Brad Pitt as Jack Conrad, which might be a reference to Conrad Veidt. And the main character of the story is a man named Manny Torres, played by Diego Calva. And this movie is one where I admit the first ha act of this movie, I was really enjoying it a lot for being a hyperbolic version of The Wolf of Wall Street meets La La Land and The Great Gatsby, all put in the blender. And I love the moment where they're trying to make this historic war epic kind of movie. And I was really enjoying the movie a lot, but as the movie kept going and going, I was just falling out of love with this movie. And I was just like waiting for the movie to end where it's like, can it just end already? It's just, it's such a bonkers movie. I, I do think I need to make an award for WTF movie of the year because I remember watching the movie Blonde, you know, earlier this year. And that movie was kind of like this one where it's a biopic movie. It's a hard, well, that was NC-17. This is def technically a radar movie. But still, there are moments where I'm like, this should have been NC-17 in some ways, shape, or form. Like, there are so many things in this movie. They pretty much show just about every single degenerate stuff you can think of in this movie. Just nearly amount. You can... Just about anything you can think of, well, except for bestiality, that's something The Shape of Water did, and that won an Academy Award, so... And back to <laughs> Babylon, which is not necessarily off-topic in that, because I remember reading about how Damien Chazelle, the director of this movie and writer of this movie, originally was going to make a glorified version of the 1920s during the silent era of Hollywood and how it transitioned to the talkies. However, he decided to look into history and saying, like, wait a minute, Hollywood was pretty degenerate and messed up back then. Which, yeah, I mean, part of that was part of the reason why the Hayes Code was made back in the day, because they realized how, you know, degenerate and how much, like, provocative content they were pushing onto the masses on these unelected officials who were trying to take dictate the morals of society at the time. I could definitely see that happening with why that's the case. Now, when it comes to the characters in the movie, it is a bit of a mixture of some characters are directly inspired by people who historically did exist and then there are some characters who are inspired by people in a loose way of people that did exist but a primary example of someone who did exist that is in the movie is Irene Thalberg who's played by Max Mignella. Now Irene Th Thalberg, I'm, I'm sorry again if I mispronounced his name, I'm not very good with pronouncing people's names but the thing is I remember this guy's name because he was partially responsible for producing The Hunchback in Notre Dame which was the first of many Universal monster movies so you gotta thank this guy partially for starting the Universal monster movies which is my favorite movie franchise. Another thing I'll say I enjoyed about this movie was showing how frustrating it was to get accustomed to sound movies where now it's like the actor has to hit the mark right here and the cameraman has to be in an isolated area and the sound guy has to be in this booth making sure everything sounds right and it's got to be completely silent because how sensitive the microphones are. And there's other attention to detail which I did appreciate about this movie but there's just some things about this movie where I felt like, do you really need to go that far or show this or that? It was just 
weird. And another weird choice for this movie for me was seeing Tobey Maguire as this gangster who I felt like he was miscast as the type of character he was playing. I mean, he gave a good performance in the movie, but the thing is, I just felt like he was miscast. I didn't really think he was this intimidating gangster character that was to be feared. In fact, he kind of shows a little bit late to the movie. The main issues I do have with the movie I mentioned, besides it being way too bonkers and kind of a bit too excessive on the mature content, of the movie which I know someone would argue like oh but that was like the point to show all the degeneracy and kind of hold up a mirror to them and yeah you can kind of say there's some generous stuff that goes on nowadays in Hollywood but the thing is that this movie was just too long and there are certain characters that I would have personally cut from the movie because they didn't really add a whole lot the movie is over three hours long and this movie easily should have been edited down to fit a runtime that would, would have benefited in the pacing department and especially the final scene of the movie where the main character kind of spoilers kind of sees the movie singing in the rain he kind of flashes back to earlier in his life and we see like this montage of movies and some of them are pretty mainstream others are very art house and it just gets so super pretentious at the end that and i was just lifting my hands up in the air like what am i watching <laughs> I know it sounds like a cop-out, but the thing is, I have no idea what to rate this movie right now. It's one of the rare moments of when I watch a movie and I have no idea what rating to give it because I'm just so, I'm just still processing this movie because how just off the walls this thing was. It's just, what is, what was with this movie? What was this writer and director thinking? It's just, you know, it shows how too much of a, too much of something can really be a bad thing. I know people would say too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, but I just felt like there was too much, like, excess. So many things that should have been either trimmed down pacing-wise or should have been just trimmed out altogether. So Babylon is a movie that I wouldn't necessarily recommend seeing in theaters, but I would recommend watching it when it comes home video to watch it with other movie buffs and film historians and trying to see and dissect the movie and trying to separate the meat from the bone from like what they made up and what really did happen but just kind of dissect this thing because i'm still digesting this movie and just processing how you know how just bizarre this movie was so anyway this is tyler from anchor reviews and i hope you enjoyed this episode of after the credits on anchor reviews and i hope to make a lot more in the future please like and subscribe